wild geese over the desert by glenn ward dressbach for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo wild geese over the desert from sunset slowly fading to misted barrel and blue streaked with the melted topaz the goose wedge comes in view the boughs of twisted cedars on ledges darkly sway making a futile gesture to rise and fly away nothing will have beginning and nothing end in me for watching the geese fly over that any one may see only my heart makes gesture of lifting wings to go like boughs of the twisted cedars dark on a fading glow End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Song by Arthur Simons for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. Silver bangles on the wrists, chains like hanging fruit. From her head, a pale bow nodding to her naked foot eyes half asleep earrings like the wild mood and the silken dawn had clothed the body with webs from her loom gypsy gypsy the moon is on the wane why did you steal the moon for your earrings and my heart to hang on your chain end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Challenge by Mary Brent Whiteside for Poetry of the Double Dealer, nineteen twenty two by Various. Read for LibriVox dot org by Matt Perard. These times are the ancient times when the world is ancient and not those which we account ancient by an inverted reckoning. Bacon. Now are the ancient times. The world is old, and old are we who have the messages of burning Ilium, of Socrates, from his dark cup. Can we be young who hold in living hands the tale Assyria told, and, master of illimitable seas, the key to yet sublimer destinies? Our youth pass by with Sargon's squandered gold. We are the ancient world. It is for us who saw the ruin of Sardanapalus, and then the proud Hellenic glory pass, the challenge of the ages, false and true, ye have our blood bought message, yet, alas, what would we learn, should we come back from you? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Vestments by Edward Sapir for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Vestments The blue sky is a carapace for the green glint field, wrapped in the glory of your face as a soul seven sealed. O oh, heart of me, O oh, painted door, to another heart of me, life is a glittering screen for another mystery. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Trees in Paris, 1890, by Arthur Simons, for poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. The pining leaves that only know the light of Paris gasp by night. The leaves that hunger for the harvest moon and sunny birds that croon among the branches rocking in the breeze. The piteous boulevard trees. How can they drink the day or night across such memories of loss? 
all day they dream of sunlight such as yields its rapture to the fields of streams that curl about the roots now grown half brother to the stone and all the night they long for the cool gleams the moonlight lays on streams all that they see instead of flocks and herds and happy flights of birds is the long dull mechanic flow of feet through links of jostling street the wheels that turn behind the patient horse upon his weary course and all the human faces dull and base face after tedious face this is the fate of trees that know the light of paris gas by night end of poem this recording is in the public domain sonnet to my wife by maxwell bodenheim for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo sonnet to my wife they say that music is the squandered cry of starved emotions on a mountain side and that celestial sweat is on their stride flinging its tortured glint upon their shy and wild sounds as they rush or creep to high in liquid death on tops of sensual pride this children's rhapsody is like a bride who paints a sentimental kiss on sky deride the shallow eloquence of sound that throws its sighs and cries against the mind and listen to the cold voice of my wife her music cut by thought makes a profound mosaic whose sardonic stones are lined into a question poised at noisy life and a poem this recording is in the public domain wedding gifts by paul eldridge for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo wedding gifts i am gathering a large bouquet of weeds and dead leaves and long thorns for my soul bride of truth upon her wedding day i am gathering a lapful of sharp pointed stones and deep sacks of mockery and laughter confetti for the grand procession i am gathering dry faggots and heavy logs a thick rope and a tall smooth pole for my soul bride of truth upon her wedding day and a poem this recording is in the public domain love is such a mischief by john mcclure for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard love is such a mischief that i dare not say i would give you riches to barter it away sired by disaster damned by discontent gold that would buy it is spendthrift spent were it worth a penny were it worth a song ere i purchased any i should falter long time no more shall find me in such sorry plight who once bought too dearly so false a delight end of poem this recording is in the public domain presences by oscar williams for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo presences all day i played in the winter sun and came back home when the day was done i lit the lamp in my dusty room and something vanished in the startled gloom something in the dark and heavy air lit like teeth with a savage flare the fingers of snow on the ledge were the sea 
climbing into the room on me in the pointed shadows of table and chair were the toes of darkness hiding somewhere the silence looked our eyes came to grips and the tall gray door was a finger to his lips and a poem this recording is in the public domain ballad inventory by dominic de arms for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perrar in all lands and down the ages as their boswells prove to the bane of skades and sages has been tendered love to catullus was allotted lesbia a wily woman white she was but not unspotted he was human unto ovid was vouchsafed fickle fanciful corena very soon love's ribands chafed this bewitching sinner to petrarch was laura given little loath to hear his pleas abelard enjoyed curt heaven with dame heloise lonely dante gaunt and burning for the icy beatrice spent himself and youth in learning love's dark mysteries herrick sighed in vain for julie callow shakespeare conscience struck wived his paramour and duly run amuck hot dick loveless gallant knightly pale locasta did adore who shall say or wrong or rightly he loved honour more sidney planned his love to stella keats to fanny braun shelley visionary fellow honeyed more than one byron goethe loved their many hearken read and rule he is wise who loves not any and a fool end of poem this recording is in the public domain two poems by maxwell bodenheim for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo two poems old actor any minor poet can claim that his subject resembles music her steps were notes of music his presence was like a song you are like a long neglected instrument from which the player with overconfident lips blows only a jet of dust that falls upon the damp chagrin of his face moist from the futile effort he asks his listeners to admire imaginary notes they clap their hands and he must retire to the slow digesting of his lie old actor you have finished reciting hamlet your pennies are gathered and you depart from the velvet noise of the restaurant imaginary people to hide your isolation you become tame and loquacious bowing to the men who bring you ornaments and poverties your cryptic melancholy dwindles then solved by the distant contrast of your words your loneliness with an amused relief sits listening to your volubility and idling with an enervated grief the play does not begin until you say your last good night for you have only made a swindled fantasy regain its parts throughout the night you held an unseen blade upon your lap and trifled with its hilt and now you lift it with submissive dread should you attack your loneliness and grief now that they are asleep you shake your head end a poem this recording is in the public domain the last night by james feibelman for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. The Last Night 
some day when each brave heart i've loved in turn goes the old way and life is desolate i think that one in silence will return to the dead haunts and forms she knew of late there will be for her pleasant paths to go and a quick friend she could not know of old but seeing now the phantom world will glow tremble and start and suddenly turn cold fond shade there will be welcome for you here within the lonely boundary of walls most anxious he will listen with thin fear all frightened for remembered soft footfalls so filling the dull gloom with a keen past the night will go and this will be his last and the poem this recording is in the public domain at broad bar by martha webster for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for liverbox dot org by matt perard i saw a wise sea wife washing a red rough muffler for sea wear and shaking her head grizzled long wed murmuring mumbling and now he must go comes fear on my heart like foam on a bow but there let him go the stravaging wind seeks on the sea and a boat is a ship the sea drawn are eager to go in a ship to come in a ship i saw a bent sea wife go out bonneted to dry a wet muffler of kelp color red shaking her head end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the patio by lewis gilmore for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard what you show leads one to imagine the rest it is not nice to show so much or so little end of poem this recording is in the public domain since you love beauty o my soul by paul eldridge for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo since you love beauty o my soul since you love beauty o my soul i shall build a golden cross for you and stud it heavily with costly jewels the nails to pierce your palms and feet shall be of purest silver sharp as swords the hands that drive them soft and white and covered with rings of rare designs the vinegar perfumed with the breath of lilies shall overbrim a cup of dazzling jade high priest shall throw dice diamond dotted to win your silken robe since you love beauty o oh my soul end a poem this recording is in the public domain the garret of dreams by william griffith for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo the garret of dreams perrault having taken a garret once found he had mislaid the rent should the concierge sue what was he to do move out or stay in shout aloud to the crowd or say to himself with an impious grin that he must have been sent by the goblins to give the place a clair and free it of sin where within beyond doubt such abodes are too apt to abound a sort of quaint ragged place forgotten forlorn suggesting disgrace was this for a poet to lease much less to inhabit in peace yet perrault being simply a poet half born and half made had somewhere to live 
in the absence of such as Perret, and strive between days to forgive and forget ah strange as it seems he managed to dwell and sleep well in his garret of dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain painted girls by oscar williams for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo painted girls the painted girls are dancing like motes within a brain the warning hand of the darkness is the black window pane the floor of silver glimmers the orange bubbles gleam and shadows move in mirrors frails the glass of dream a universe is turning its huge slow wheels of sleep and fog like shadow harmony is rolling through the deep the huge slow wheels are striking the starlight glittering by the golden frost is burning in the blue snow of the sky the painted girls are dancing the lights are bright like pain and the warning hand of the darkness is the black window pane end a poem this recording is in the public domain words by ivan t dowell for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo words babylon with never resting tongues you are so full of words that you have read great bellies full of books cry out your lungs i turn to silence for a bed my aching ears are vomiting the speech you spewed in them man's ears should have a flap you munched some books then swollen with wet words came gurgling pap bawl loudly now and quickly lest you burst and that red tongue should fly from out your head tell the full matter starting at the first i turn to silence being fed End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Anthology of the Lowly, continued by Paul Eldridge, for Poetry of the Double Dealer, nineteen twenty-two, by various read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. Gander. Had I only cared to stretch my strong white neck above my wives and sisters heads i could have easily become a tall swan i believed in necks of equal size i lived and died a gander goat i put it life ceaselessly with my two strong horns my horns broke life goes on unscathed who is the breaker of horns frog of the silly vanity that made me puff and puff until my speckled skin burst and i was left a shapeless spirit i am not ashamed but sharper than a crooked hook that pierces the belly is the bitter and constant regret that the one i wished to equal was but an ox goose now that i am dead i may explain the mystic meaning of my ceaseless cackling i warn the world and prophesied the sun will drown in the puddle the sun will drown in the puddle i was shooed and mocked at and slaughtered my prophecy has come to pass the earth is a black desert the sun lies sunken in the mud flee i was the knight errant of insects seeking adventure i winged my way in eager quest man dog monkey hen i bit them all and everywhere i learned too late as i was crushed between the two great thumbs of death that all flesh tastes alike swan upon the smooth cool lake bordered by frail sad willows we sailed slowly dreaming the two of us one white one black breasts 
on breast the world burst in flames the willows dropped into the lake the lake bent and plunged into a deep abyss the white one vanished the black is left to mourn upon the silent frozen shore of endlessness end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mortuary Agnosti by Jesse Hugo Feldman for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various, read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. Peaked, drawn face, quivering lips, and dark, scornful eyes, crying silently with barbed, broken cries, a lost crane, wheeling, returning, falling, blinded with pain circling over a slate sea through a slow wet drizzle you eddy forever in the damp mists of my brain you too i pray sometime i shall forget end of poem this recording is in the public domain while i talked by oscar williams for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard across your face glimmered my words like shadows of low-flying birds until i was struck dumb to see how strangely looking out on me a silence waited in your eyes patient and sorrowful and wise end of poem this recording is in the public domain grist by ivan t dowell for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard love upsets a man marriage stands him on his head divorce shakes him down as a child he loved to set off rockets at the moon when he grew up he loved to read poems to a beautiful girl the trouble is not that people fall in love but that they usually dive in where it is so awfully shallow it is better to remain single and possess many dreams than to marry a vision and sleep by yourself think twice before falling in love with a married woman her husband might die a rash marriage is only skin deep in a poem this recording is in the public domain underworld note by maxwell bodenheim for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo underworld note i know a woman in chicago who drinks a pint of whiskey every night and gambles against hilarity risking the tinsel cloudiness of her infant heart demons lurk in her dimples her eyes are tortured babies her mind is a series of lifeless abortions preceded by thrust of pain the fingers of men have tapped drumbeats of reality on her face beneath an electric light she drinks her pint of whiskey every night like one who endures an imbecile's caress while waiting for her master his foot sound on the white tiled floor will hold the musical effect of a blow tantalizing her body throughout the night she has been an interrupted caper waiting for its orchestra of pain and a poem this recording is in the public domain off by marx g sable for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard the amphagoric legend of a popular refrain vivid people dancing on a pier many twitching stars and a quick lean rain of wind oh come my dear 
charlie has a party on we're going up the beach shake that boob and come with us a livid moon like a bloated leech and black black water thunderous a long white stretch of glittering sand and the put 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 of a busy exhaust four white circles where you got a hand a stab of wind and a holocaust of dunes and palms and short-clipped words of hair and coats and pattering foam the lighthouse huddles like a nigger gnome and the stars fly past us silver birds end of poem this recording is in the public domain at st rock's chapel by edna adelaide strauss for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard burn a candle to st roque and for your heart's wish pray and it will surely come to pass or so they say but oh be careful what you ask so if your wish come true anticipation has not staled reality for you end of poem this recording is in the public domain ruins by paul eldridge for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo ruins gray and black rats swing upon the rope and the weary bell bends and rings clang clang the rusty tongue breaks the intricate bars of the spider subtle jailer and strikes drearily a paralytic tune clang clang an old woman on the roadside kneels and mutters lord have mercy gray and black rats swinging on a rope and a dead bell ringing and a dead god crumbling above a broken altar end a poem this recording is in the public domain art by kale young rice for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard an invisible worker drives gray nails of rain drenchingly into the earth he is building floors of grass and pavilions of trees to be hewed a little hints with the breath of blossoms he is shaping his house of life i had rather build a blade of grass than self-entombing pyramids End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sarah Three Needles, Boston, 1698, by Catherine Lee Bates, for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various, read for LibriVox.org, by Matt Perard. By the grim grace of the Puritans, she had been brought into their frigid meeting-house to list her funeral sermon before the rope ran taut soft neck that he had kissed through the narrow window her dazed blue eyes could see the rope like a glittering icicle it hung from the horror cross-beam of the horrible gallows tree his arms about her flung two captive indians and one guinea slave hating at heart the merciless white god in the stubborn ground were hacking her shallow grave sweet april path they trod her shivering neighbors thrilled to the fierce discourse of the minister who thundered the dire sting of a sinner's death till his vehement voice went hoarse she heard love's whispering and still she stood while the frozen communion bread that the preacher broke ere he poured the chilly wine rattling into the plates her judges fed her food was more divine end of poem this recording is in the public domain
five inconsequential charms by elizabeth j coatsworth for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt Berard. charm for a silver spoon spoon o oh spoon wrought from thin silver bright as a small moon drollest and most companionable of all utensils of the housewife's table be serviceable beside my cup of tea and by the fire share bread and milk with me charm for running water hesitator faltering from pool to pool leaping like a child or a fawn among the rocks leaf dappled wild and sweet turn not from us languid with summer charm on making a bed with sheets cool and smooth i bid you bring rest with the fleece of soft blankets lap warmly the spirit with the quaintness of quilts give whimsical dreams charm for the disreputable crows crow crow ironic and rusty raucous voiced heavy winged tattered and dusty tramp bird scamp bird i beg you to fly in grotesque grandeur against my sky charm for a jar all the flowers of the garden fresh from dew and slant of sunlight fresh from song and the loam's clinging beg your kindness foster mother end of poem this recording is in the public domain babblers by martha banning thomas for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo babblers they said that she was cold i watched them say it their sly tongues coiled around the word and licked it furtively they said that her aloofness was an art practice imperially they shattered all her beauty into bits and with her heels crushed out the iridescence this was their sole retaliation against a fear of her and what they could not understand end a poem this recording is in the public domain garbage heap by maxwell bodenheim for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo garbage heap the wind was shrill and mercenary like a sodden housewife pacing down the sky green weeds and tin cans in the yard made a debris of ludicrous dissipations the ochre of cold elations had settled on the cans their brilliant labels peeped from the weeds like the remains of a charlatan a bone reclined against a fence post and modally congratulated life a woman's garter wasted its faded frills upon a newspaper argument the dismal rancor of boxes and bottles spoke to the spirit of the yard contented or incensed the wreckage stood in the twilight one shade below the sardonic end a poem this recording is in the public domain nocturne by lewis gilmore for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt Perard. was it the oysters or the insidious influence of the moon heavenly bodies in conjunction at any rate and at dawn the inexorable dirty yellow end of poem this recording is in the public domain earth's fingers by don pops for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for liverbox dot org by matt Perard. 
dependable even poplars moody rheumatic oaks frail pale willows with lacy tendrils tapering like a chinaman's nail grown up from earth's black skin what mingling atoms in the pot of time have united to fashion such delicately different fingers on the hand of earth end of poem this recording is in the public domain stigma by emmy veronica sanders for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo stigma outside there is a chill rain falling and a wind keeps shaking the bare old tree but the child poring over the big red book does not see the gray rain does not hear the wind calling the child is lying in front of the fire head propped on small frail hands straining its eyes in the dull glow of the fire over stories of far-away people in marvellous lands anger is forgotten in the fierce sting of pain the child in its hidden nook has entered its own safe world again the world that lives in the old red picture book the people in the books they seem to know those things at which the real people laugh and sneer things that subtly come and suddenly disappear like the breath of a flower or little clouds drifting or melting snow the people in the books they understand those things without a name or well-known shape like the shape of a ball or your body and how they escape when you try to touch them with words the way you touch the kitten with your hand they live inside of you somewhere and they like best to come and play at dusk by the coal fire or at dawn when you open your eyes to see bright beautiful colors in the skies or when you listen to music or water lapping or words like mandalay people in books never heard those strange wonderful things that you must hide why do the real people hurt them then and the loud real things that live outside and a poem this recording is in the public domain song by glenn ward drasbach for poetry of the double dealer 1922 by various read for LibriVox.org by matt perard compare love to the seasons if only to retain the sense of strange departures of things that come again love's spring is a moment's laughter the glimpse of a blossomy gown in distance and then seeking through blossoms drifting down summer and autumn and winter one day of love may know fruit and the bright leaves falling and the first chill of snow but what gives love its splendor is something lost one spring a lure of elusive rapture and dreams remembering end of poem this recording is in the public domain Quintilian a ballad by edmund wilson jr for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard one quintilian walked on the quirinal rome was crashing to decay the tilted shadows of the cypress notched the appian way quintilian in mild elation pondered a peroration two quintilian walked among the quince buds roman order collapsed the catacombs beneath his tread hid churches crudely apsed quintilian in a tempered glee plotted a shrewd peripety three quintilian enjoyed the quince buds which he couldn't distinguish from peach 
he was brooding on a senditon a styanax and other figures of speech nero and his sycophants were violating their uncles and aunts four quintilian mused on a ruined quern the barbarians gathered like thunder nobody came to warn quintilian to stand out from under the skies with triple bolts were torn and calves with fifteen feet were born five the waters drove the dike burst quintilian was crushed like a quince leaving nothing but his immortal works which nobody has read since at least neither i nor dr bishop has yet nor has anybody else in our set six all things alas like shadows fly quintilian nero rome quince buds ascendantin and i to dust and ash must come yet suns still shine and quince buds bloom again delight the loves and lives of other men end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Centaurs by Elizabeth J. Coatsworth For Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Centaurs Summer Out along the wet clinging sands we gallop, throwing a mist of flying grains behind us, splashing into the water cool and green dipping hands under the swaying surface to throw over heaving sides letting the bubble-crested waves fling their spray into our faces ere we walk back with streaming fetlocks wringing the water from our hair into the hidden green of the forest flight clatter and clash of galloping small hoofs over the stones and roots between the trees whipping of yellow hair frantic across straining shoulders rhythmic flexing of haunches streaming of tail and behind the thunder 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 of great black hoofs and sibilant breathing and outstretched knotted hands death the blood that drips down to the grass from my wounded side hangs on the blades like small heavy scarlet flowers a pathway to death along which my hoofs stumble and still on my sweating hair lies the garland of hawthorn and still on my cheeks a red which is not the red of blood but my sinews and bones bend with the weight of this one light arrow hard driven through my side and i stumble along the red flowered path of my death and a poem this recording is in the public domain. Locution de Perrault, translated from the French of Jules Lafort by Hart Crane. For Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. 1. Your Eyes those pools with soft rushes o oh, prodigal and holy dilatory lady come now when will they restore me the orient moon of my dapper affections for eminent is that moment when because of your perverse austerities my crisp soul will be flooded by a languor bland as the wide gaze of a newfoundland ah madam truly it's not right when one isn't the real Gioconda to adaptate her methods and deportment, or snaring the poor world in a blue funk. 2. Ah, the divine infatuation that I nurse for Cydalise, now that she has fled the capture of my lunar sensibility. True, I nibble at despondencies among the flowers of her domain to the sole end of discovering what is her unique propensity which is to be mine you say alas you know how much i oppose a stiff denial to postures 
that seemed too much impromptu three ah without the moon what white nights what nightmares rich with ingenuity don't i see your white swans there doesn't someone come to turn the knob and it's your fault that i'm this way that my conscience sees double and my heart fishes in troubled water for eve Giaconda, and delilah oh by the infinite circumflex of the arch beam of my cross-legged labors come now appease me just a little with the why and wherefore of your sex end of poem this recording is in the public domain euthanasia by alan tate for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo euthanasia no more the white refulgent streets never the dry gutters of the mind shall he in hellish boredom walk again for death is not unkind the graceless madness of her lips who was the powder puff of life cannot rouge those cheeks nor warm his cold corpuscles back to strife what did he gain what did he lose these questions for the pious dead are blown from bosoms of kind souls a scented sorrow corseted high up above our busy heads busied with gullets gorging dimes we raise him to a grinning sky shouting his praise a hundred times and a poem this recording is in the public domain beth marie by william alexander percy for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo beth marie impatiently she drew her breath so new was life so wild but patiently she waited death and when he touched her smiled she who had never wished to die who had such fear of pain was tranquil as an evening sky that flowers from spent rain for us her loss was different from all we could suppose the calm of spartan stars she lent who only seemed a rose and a poem this recording is in the public domain an old man dreams by walter mcclellan for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard there's beauty in the mind beyond the moment's glow in the mind of an old man the eighteen eighties flow in beauty of racing horses young bods have beauty where his memories are blown as leaves upon the air oh passionately he would be his own young self and stream out of the house of his mind and out of an old man's dream and now he is at the door when leaves all suddenly curl to the round of a bitter mouth and the bitter eyes of a girl End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. She Sews by Harold Vinam for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various, read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. She's always mending aprons or making bits of lace. She hasn't time to look out at a passing face the lads of camden are nothing to her only the sound of needles or the wheels were she was born a dreamer but she never leaves her room she sweeps up the thread ends with a little broom and what she is thinking and what she knows is less than the sound of the wind when it blows 
she was born a gypsy but she never seeks the road nor follows after pipers with a gypsy load neither moon or water makes her catch her breath perhaps she knows that love is as hard as death she's always mending aprons or making bits of lace she hasn't time to look out at a passing face the lads of camden are nothing to her only the sound of needles or the wheels were end of poem this recording is in the public domain celine by joseph campbell for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo celine one the moon rose up the moon rose up in a dove-winged sky the way for moon went drifting by the dove-wing deepened into blue the moon turned silver the stars looked through black tufted fir boughs blown to flame by the gusty wind that went and came till the sea unseen in the gathering night strewed the distance with crest of white what though the like had fallen before i knelt to beauty and shut my door two into the gathered cornfields into the gathered cornfields the moon comes red and round the night bee passes with a low humming sound on the silent shore the ebb tide drowses dusk like a dream lies over the farmhouses the wind barely stirs the dew-heavy fern the fox has stolen from the cairn sleep claims the tillage rock land and the unknown sky where the gay northern lights pale now and die pale now and die as the red moon pales whitening dwindling the higher it sails end a poem this recording is in the public domain fruits of circumstance by chang chu ling translated by witterbeiner and kian kang hu for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo fruits of circumstance one tender orchid leaves in spring and cinnamon blossoms bright in autumn are self-contained as the spirit of life which accords them to the seasons a forest hermit though nobody know him allured by sweet winds and contented with beauty is as true to nature as a plant which never invites you to gather it up two south of the river red oranges grow whose leaves are green all winter long not because of a warmer soil but because their nature bears the cold they are suitable for honored guests but alas are far over mountain and stream and circumstance governs destiny and cause and effect are an infinite cycle you speak of planting peaches and plums would this other tree afford no shade end a poem this recording is in the public domain. Crescent Moon by Vincent Starrett for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. The sight, I think, is more than odd. Outside the roadhouse kept by God, the lounging stars with youthful den shout down the banqueting within and with their socialistic roar persuade the landlord to the door the stars with mocking laughter fly across the prairies of the sky while after the vexatious gang god hurls a silver boomerang i hope it will not turn and strike a kind old gentleman i like End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
a mask of shadows by arthur simons for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for liverbox dot org by matt perard poor helpless shadow of deceit the shadow of no magic flower i find you helen in the street this unanointed sacred hour here where the dust of trodden feet desecrates the street this very hour that consecrates all that the night could never keep menaces what our changeless fates leave to us in our dreamless sleep nave menelaus desecrates the folly of our fates only before the night grows thin about us in our city street what is the sin that we must sin helen when dawn and darkness meet fine webs of passion our souls spin out of their own deceit oh lie with me on the naked grass in uttermost abandonment drink in the naked winds that pass drink deep of the passion of their scent the scent of the sea that sighs alas my helen's scent you came to me from the seventh gate of that fire-doomed and deathless troy o oh, passion pale and passionate o oh, flesh most fair mad to destroy that flesh that you are mad to hate mad to destroy over bright paris lies the dust and we are here and we must love until our love transfigures lust then taste the poison scent thereof as on the gallows a man upthrust feeds on his lust End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Effort by Hortense Flexner for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various, read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. The wind will not cry out in marble, nor towers be told in music yet am i sculptor forever laboring to carve the morning wind in stone and a musician seeking vainly for sounds out of which to build my tower end of poem this recording is in the public domain the flight of asmodeus by catherine lee bates for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo the flight of asmodeus to the uttermost parts of egypt the demon fled over the long green nile that writhed and quivered under his agony like a kindred snake the rustling reeds of papyrus bowed and shivered then did the moonlight pillars of karnak quake and deep in their pyramids moaned the mummied dead the rebel gods those waiting the sunrise red twins of the desert the crouching sphinx young horus and ancient amen the awful four on their throne of abul simbel all in a thunder chorus called on jehovah and chilled to colossal stone to the uttermost parts of egypt the demon fled end a poem this recording is in the public domain sashira by hazel collister hutchison for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt Perard gray cities are the murmured words a garrulous old earth sometimes slips in between sharp brittle little quips and laughter one twilight after rain in paris i know she had her finger to her lips end of poem this recording is in the public domain portrait by william faulkner for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read 
for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Portrait Raise your hand between us to your face, and draw the opaque curtains on your eyes. Let us walk here, softly checked with shadow, and talk of careful trivialities. Let us lightly speak at random. Tonight's movie, repeat a broken conversation, word for word, of friends and happiness. The darkness scurries, and we hear again a music both have heard. Singing blood to blood between our palms. Come, lift your eyes, your tiny scrap of mouth, so lightly mobile on your dim white face, aloofly talk of life profound in youth and simple also young and white and strange you walk beside me down the shadowed street against my hand your small breast softly lies and your laughter breaks the rhythm of our feet you are so young and frankly you believe this world this darkened street this shadowed wall are dim with beauty you passionately know cannot fade nor cool nor die at all raise your hand then to your scarce seen face and draw the opaque curtains on your eyes profoundly speak of life of simple truths the while your voice is clear with frank surprise end a poem this recording is in the public domain Ultimately, by Ernest M. Hemingway, for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org, by Winston Tharp. He tried to spit out the truth, dry-mouthed at first. He drooled and slobbered in the end, truth dribbling his chin. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nightingale by Richard Aldington For Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Nightingale Night winds beat my naked flesh, waves of air rush over me. The young moon stands among frozen clouds. Far off as death burn the ice sparkles which are stars. A wall of rough black pines cuts the pale sky. Your voice, ah, chastest coldest thing. The brief shill clang of ice on glass, the note of fragile metal sharply struck, the lapse of waters. Ah, virginal delight, the woods hold you in the boughs frozen with dew. This is no love song, no breath of wine in summer flowers, no murmur of desire, but such a hymn, fierce, lonely, and untamed, as the Trozenian hunter sang before the marble shrine. So wild a song once rose from the women of Artemis in some cold hidden valley where trees somberly ringed a black lake in cold mist glided as the first moon rays glittered through clouds those foam frail girls greek sailors saw beyond their prows whose flesh was cooled by the wave's heart whose veins ran spray of the storm sang this song as dawn stood gray on the sea's rim but this is no love song, no echo of kisses. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jane Horner by Richard Kirk for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Jane Horner she sat in a corner and never said a word the timidest sweet soul in all creation the lords called her to him which proves beyond a doubt i think 
that he doesn't care at all for conversation. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Not to a Temple Dancer by Glenn Ward Dressbach for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Not to a Temple Dancer Not to a Temple Dancer in leopard skin and gold were given temple secrets, but all of them she told. The wise men in the temple found nothing they could say, but each looked at the other, and then each looked away. And not to love is given the wisest words men scrawl in temples of their yearning, but love has said all. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Mardi Gras Night, Panama, by Glenn Ward Dressbach, for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various, read for LibriVox.org, by Nemo. Mardi Gras Night, Panama. The plumage of the jungle overgrows this town between the jungle and the sea. The tom tom booms upon each wind that blows and ship lights blink red eyes of wizardry behind the mask are faces we have known but eyes flash lures that were not seen before what island princess of lost ebon throne thrills with vain conquest of her tribe once more this night revives in blood from martinique from all changed islands of the caribbees barbaric raptures hidden in the meek deep down is treasures in the pirate seas what madness in us answers and revives some wistfulness that haunts us all our lives end a poem this recording is in the public domain san cristobal by muna lee for poetry of the double dealer 1922 by various read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. San Cristobal Vivid and still is the noon, the almonds forget the breeze, red flowers droop from the cactus hedge, red leaves from the mango trees. Incredibly blue is the sea, incredibly blue the sky, and above a wall for centuries old drifts a yellow butterfly. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. William Blake by Alan Tate for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. William Blake Now William pulled the lever down, and click-clack went the printing press. William was the only printer in town who had peeped while the angels undress. Damn this unmystical sweat, quoth he. He was longing for the new Jerusalem. Now in sketching an evil spirit, let's see. Should the skirt of Lot's wife have a wine hem? And William had dudgeon for the sightless beetle, who worshipped a god like a grandmother on ice skates. For William saw two angels on the point of a needle as nobody since except w b yeats he browsed in pathetic books jacob bema and paracelsus which never mattered but he mentioned the ohio river in a poem so americans ought to feel flattered william blake cursed the flesh for a clod yet of some of his sayings we moderns have heard tell the nakedness of woman is the work of god or that title the marriage of heaven and hell now i don't believe william ever saw that ghost or even the universe in a fleck of dust but maybe i'm blind like a soul lost with a lot of psychoanalytic lust end a poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Appreciation by Richard Kirk for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Appreciation On this side I spade and pull, on that grows grass and clover. My donkey, when his belly's full, thrusts his long face over. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Songs of the Seasons by Mary Austin for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Songs of the Seasons, a free rendering of an Amerindian song sequence. One. I have mentioned all the seasons and the stars to Wawanat, all the little steadfast stars, and the walkers of the night, where the flying light of sun is caught and hidden. I have named them to Wawanat. I have named the thunder with his moccasins of dark cloud walking on the mountain. I have named the Tavukamal, the clean March water washing down the last year's leaves the little silver rains the many-footed rains dancing with the meadow larks round the roots of the rainbow two i have named the pahioma with walnut when the ant has her house in her hill when the spider opens her dew-shining door white butterflies emerging in their spotted robes from their sacred dance enclosure the wind tossing the white blossom cones of the chamois and the sea's white foam flowers now the sky is ashamed of what he did to the maiden summer retreating afar and on high he tugs at the four world quarters the elk brings forth in the north the wild sheep at tamukula the horned lizard on the hot sands round turtle rock with his young is dancing all these i have mentioned in my songs i have made a twine of songs to bind them with wawanat three i have named the summer to wawanat i have mentioned earth's contented noises i have named the star chief kukulish bathing in the summer water and lovely light left over from the evening to the morning i have named the ripe wild oats moon white on the sea looking ranges arrows twanging in the white oak brows women stripping deer meat all these i have mentioned to wawanut women winnowing chia i have made them songs with a net of songs have tied them with wawanut i have believed my songs we have made the seasons and the stars work together with wawanut and a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Truck Drivers by Maxwell Bodenheim for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Truck Drivers You drive your lumbering steam lorries upon the streets of London and jolt your motor trucks over the asphalt of new york these minor shades of background which embarrass even smaller men have not disturbed your faces america and england are unheard jest to your faces as you tensely wrestle with your street let me take you to a side lane where the traffic is thin where your grins can barter with remnants of mind and heart left by the strain and snarl of your days there i see the features of decaying children eyeballs lips and cheeks sundering under the lack of anticipation your obvious martyrdom bears no light at present it will only shine when men from another planet speculate upon the dead moon that once was earth 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rubies of Cleopatra by Victor Oscar Freeberg for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Rubies of Cleopatra we are rubies on a long string owned by the theatrical costume company long days together sometimes weeks we lie huddled in a dark drawer touching cold wood only and each other then we yearn for the feel of palpitating flesh suddenly comes new year's eve miss portia worthington spreads out ten dollars on the counter and we are snatched up to go with her cleopatra costume oh joy warm adventure is waiting at the masquerade dance of the rotary club we hang red with desire in a double chain down miss worthington's thirty-two-year-old bosom three feet away stands a brawny roman with green leaves of cloth about his brow and many black hairs on his legs he comes closer his breast touches us the saxophone blares above the violin we quiver and whirl with antony and cleopatra we are pressed tightly and for a joyous while feel the perspiration of two bodies then comes a whiff of cold air while the saxophone rests would you believe it this is a masquerade we discover that the roman is only an exporter of wheat and that portia worthington teaches domestic science at teachers college we the rubies of cleopatra glow in vain because the price of wheat went down this afternoon to a dollar and four cents a bushel true the exporter has fine legs and therefore has come as a roman portia sees them yet she can sit there and reason that if wheat has gone down bread will be cheaper the saxophone starts again a pirate with a knife in his teeth comes to claim miss worthington again we pulsate red and eager the brass ring round the pirate's forearm presses us into portia's back we make little dents there he takes his knife out of his teeth and puts it into his belt we expect a tighter embrace in the corner of the hall his toddling boot tops patter white fox trotting knees ah leather and dimples we twist ourselves into snaky curves on portia's breast awaiting red-eyed piracy of love what a perfect masquerade the pirate is a young dentist anxious to build up practice he hadn't known exactly what to wear to the rotary club's dance and portia remembers silently a lot of things about the care of toothbrushes what a night for us the rubies of cleopatra mephistopheles approaches but portia turns away perhaps because he is too deep through the middle robin hood tries in vain to get her eye ah well there are wrinkles in his green tights then suddenly comes warm adventure a regular he-man disguised in black suit and queer white collar and making his cheeks look long a country parson but we in portia can see something in his eye which does not go with the gospel the violin is alluring now and stronger than the saxophone in a waltz there is hot harmony between portia and the parson he slides his breast downward not by accident and stretches us tight into her neck he slides upward again and we roll redly between a black coat and a silken garment portia tingles and rejoices that her legs are bare her anklets tinkle and we glow expectantly then the violin is silent and we are in a dark alcove we learn that the parson is a vaudeville actor by profession he is not afraid how gladly 
we ripple through his fingers while the backs of them caress portia gently where the breasts turn he insists that she must wear us over the hips it is more egyptian she yields and lets him drape us there high on one side and low on the other oh joy but far-sprung desire bends back against portia's training she cannot shut out a sudden vision of the most scientific way to fold sheets over the corner of a mattress queen of the nile cries the parson we pulsate red with remembrance let me be your mark your marcus aurelius he spoils it purposely because he has a wife on the floor as well as a true mistress and even a vaudeville actor must be discreet the masquerade never ends at three in the morning we are in portia's room she tears off her costume and does not see where it falls the footsteps in the hallway tell of a male neighbor just returning the shades are down she tilts the bureau mirror and can see her whole body perfectly bare and beautiful but we are more red she winds us around her hips high on one side and low on the other as the parson had taught her she sways madly and whirls to get a full view in the mirror we swing out dizzily and by accident catching the alarm clock throw it upon the cleopatra costume on the floor too late too late what can we do now against a character trained at teachers college miss portia worthington sets the alarm clock and remembers that this year she will be thirty-three end a poem this recording is in the public domain parthenia by alan tate for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo parthenia with pale green hopes and the gay colors flying of the rich shores that girded their dark land they burst into the temple where lay dying an unknown virgin gutted by her own hand the shout went up like a half-strangled song cutting the noonday languor into shreds the mob rushed out again and smote the gong bearing the phallus over their febrile heads still at her feet the thin-lipped lover prayed beating his anguish on a tympanum as in and out among the few that stayed wandered the priest's voice from the adytum lay now the grape and the bright leaves of sorrow upon the altar beside her bloody hair wash clean your hands and hearts that no to-morrow may find her unforgiven or unfair the god has not yet answered to our pity for the black vision and tangle in her brains nor is there knowing so ever in the city of the red histories that throbbed in her blue veins then as the twilight clutched a single star cold wonder drove the mourners on their way all for the riddle swore to roam afar scourging the night and gathering the day and a poem this recording is in the public domain greetings from confucius by paul eldridge for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo greetings from confucius from kong fu tsi frozen dust to his countless lovers agitated dust the difference between the good conduct and the bad is the perfumed wind a laughing courtesan stirs gently with her jewelled fan to right or left and the true and the false are the trembling shadows of a candle flickering at an open window drink deeply then from your cups of jade have many concubines with small hard breasts 
which crash within your warm eager hands smoke slowly your long ivory pipes and write faultless poems on lustrous silk to the river gliding over stones like a white snake to the lotus bud to the immutable pine tree to the wild goose dropping from the tip of his flat beak fragile fluttering spring but even these do not matter lovers of kong fu tsi life is a large handful of thin grained dust blown merrily swiftly by the pouting lips of someone the lips close the dust stiffens and chills like a bar of iron in winter but even this does not matter end of poem this recording is in the public domain mercutio by harry allen potamkin for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by nemo mercutio mercutio the artist sits in his dustbin making love to the moths that circle in through the cracked pane of the lone window mercutio makes love to the white moths he catches them and pats them gently gently brushes the powder from their wings and tears them bit by bit end a poem this recording is in the public domain san antonio by john gould fletcher for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by pat perard when a dry rain of mandolins dancing and fluttering beats on the stiffened tuberoses that hold up their chaste wax-white chalices chill to the breeze of the night that runs out of red gullied hills and creeks in the pomegranate bushes that flare out in startling scarlet down the gravelled avenue i will look up to the sky and see the long trail of the milky way rolling southwestward and i will dream only of you slowly the moon passes a lithe brown flute player lazily blowing his melancholy song on streets where dust rises and settles slowly the red earth cracks and the yellow fronts of the houses stare into silence slowly life rolls a shallow and straggling brown river unhurried from dream toward dream when a loud wind runs laughing and clattering from the pinion-clad heights to the westward and the riders of old mount and follow bronze shapes sunken cheeks and lean muscles flapping their hats as they spur their ponies on when the silent brown aisles give up the old monks that once walked there and the buffalo herds stamp again on the free wide prairie i shall return in the dawn end of poem this recording is in the public domain emperor tang skeptic by paul eldridge for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard closer than my body's shadow follows the blind nameless one carrying in his tightened yellow fist time the thin spluttering candle and in his swollen cheeks death the gray wind so fill and refill my deep golden horn with the strongest wine o wise men of china before declaiming in magnificent verse my immortality that i may nod my eyes glittering with dreams and believe end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Solitaire by Emmy Veronica Sanders for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922 by Various Read for LibriVox.org by D. Randall In the evenings, I sit and play solitaire. I light the candle so as to have the shadows on the wall for company and make things speak to me. The incandescent globe that is attached to the center of the ceiling I do not like to use. It kills the life of the things in the room, being dead itself. It speaks with the loudness of dead, obtrusive weights. In it, I cannot hear my thoughts. When the candle is lit, all things begin to move and whisper. I shuffle the cards, making neat little piles of them. I play with the cards and with my thoughts. Of my thoughts, too, I make neat little piles, shifting and shifting them. My thoughts are as silent and swift as shadows on the wall. Words, the bodies of thoughts, are stiff and inflexible. You cannot alter them once they are there. They always keep exactly the same shape and weight and color, like the substance of the things from which shadows proceed. But thoughts and the shadows themselves can expand and contract, grow lighter and darker, take on a hundred varying moving shapes. My hand is only my hand, always. But the thought of my hand or the shadow it throws on the wall, can become anything or nothing, grotesque or beautiful, the size of a pinprick or a gaping monster. I can do whatever I like with it. My hunch, too, is always there, for I am hunched back. It is always the same protuberance of flesh and bone, never changing size or shape. Only my thought about it varies. And if I keep a certain posture and hold the candle in a certain way and then look at my shadow on the wall, it ceases to be there entirely. That is why I like the thinking about things better than the things themselves. It is quite a fortunate circumstance when you are crippled and must earn your living, as I do, by embroidering. Thinking, too, is a kind of embroidering. You add little ornaments, flowery figures, glittering stuff, little meandering lines and loops and arabesques, to plain material of a few facts or a few truths that are either black or white, or somewhere in between the black and white. Thus, in the daytime, I embroider. At night, I shuffle cards and play with shadows. On the whole, I am rather content. And then, when Sunday comes, I read the papers. That almost fills the day. The picture section shows the people that are doing things and having things all over the world. There are men with beautiful bodies wrestling on platforms before high-born spectators. There are men who set out on daring expeditions to far countries. There are pictures of fine women and their little children, frail and fresh like flowers with the morning sun upon them. There are strong faces of the owners of magnificent estates and bank accounts, and famous actresses and authors. There are pictures of assemblies of men governing the fate of nations, and inventors of miraculous machines, and winners of races and contests, women and men. There are pictures of the people that fill the grand tears on gala occasions and the grandstands when there are parades, and also the photographs of happy little pet dogs that win prizes. 
in the fat sunday papers they tell you everything about the people whose bodies and whose souls never were crippled i do not envy them i see the bodies moving dancing posturing the hands of the speakers lifted and the fierce contortions of the limbs in sporting contests and the cool smiles of women safely provided for i fancy i can hear the words they speak the little sounds that come out of the soft red cavity that is their mouth and i keep wondering about the shadows they would throw in narrow rooms by candlelight how they would dwindle grow and vacillate and be grotesque as grotesque as my hunch i also wonder what the thoughts are behind the loud bright words they speak the swift and silent games inside the skull wall all over and around each little fixed and given fleshy word no i'm not dissatisfied i earn my living cleanly stitching gaudy things on black and white i have my solitaire there are times when my hunch seems a blessing to me a blessing like all final and unalterable things like being in prison or dead something about which there is nothing to be done or changed or desired any more those poor people in the sunday papers must go on desiring and desiring all their lives the many many things that are within their reach there is no finality for them no resignation and then there are those others that carry a hunch on the back of their souls that is not final either for they might shake it off if they only knew how and so they go on trying and trying but mine is peace by birthright the little shadows know it too they come and play so softly so silently along the floor and walls they steal on to the table they never interfere with little games of cards or thoughts end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Dixie by John Gould Fletcher for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Dixie Fierce, nervous, galloping tune to which gray armies danced to death bearing a broken flag as a proud jest up to the unleashed guns you leap into my heart with a flash of dogwood trills of mockingbirds and white magnolia cups abrim with light above dark glossy leaves when i am dead somewhere a band will play you still somewhere a horse will paw the earth and snort somewhere a crowd will start the rebel yell for in a last long rally i too have fought and failed i too have followed phantoms of starved hope and reeled back broken from the battlefields of hell end a poem this recording is in the public domain Albert Perkins, five. Benjamin Tom, for Poetry of the Double Dealer, nineteen twenty-two, by Various, read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. Pigwidgeons, it is rumored, aren't. Dwarger and Troll and Loup Garou, men depose our fabulous nonsense. That is Albert, men like you, Will o' the Wisp and Jen and Banshee flubber de gibbet and miss and deave certainly none of these nursery fictions men like you believe how is it then grave sceptical albert perkins you have fallen thrall to this quite absurd well lady 
who doesn't exist at all end of poem this recording is in the public domain the mouse hunt by freeman pinckney smith for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard one there's a mouse in my granary there's a mouse in my bin and i'll call all my retainers dogs cats and serving men two he called all his retainers they hunted from cellar to loft but never a mouse they found in manor house or in croft three i'll call in my carpenter i'll call in my smith to see if we can't trap him all his kin and his kith four the traps were made the traps were set but the mouse he abideth in my lord's house yet five for in my lord's heart was hidden a secret so close and so deep that only a mouse could find it the place of his storehouse and keep end of poem this recording is in the public domain reflected by hortense flexner for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for LibriVox .org by nemo reflected the moon's a corpse frozen and still she drifts in silvery ashes through the night and yet this earth still fretted with a scarlet pulsing thing called life draws from the moon's pale glamour and decay her eerie trick of loveliness what welter of hot passion and new blood End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Walking in an Inland City by George O'Neill for Poetry of the Double Dealer, nineteen twenty two, by Various, read for LibriVox .org by Matt Perard. Monotonous, unfertile street, people and trees as dull as rust, a blaze and shimmering of heat cars clattering through clouds of dust o oh, sea wind bitter in the sedge green wave with the foaming edge buildings that hunch and brood and stare windows to let the darkness out doors cornices and chimneys square signs that grimace and grin and shout tall creek columns as pure as snow supporting nothing in a row End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hourglass by Hortense Flexner for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by D. Randall. Mine is to experience as an hourglass to time. The very sand that measures the moments dribbles away in a poem this recording is in the public domain things for granted by richard kirk for poetry of the double dealer 1922 by various read for LibriVox.org by d rando i take things for granted now without more ado growing in my easy way as great a fool as you end of poem this recording is in the public domain stucco on stone by edmund wilson jr for poetry of the double dealer 1922 by various read for librivox .org by matt perard to J.P.B. 1. By summer seas that lull your flight, By drowsy shores serenely old, In gleaming towns of rose and white, You will find bodies burnt to gold. 
there where the waves are brought to heel there where the alps no longer free come down like elephants to kneel beside the glazed and azure sea or parch for yellow rose and red where matter rose and yellow rot gay drooping palaces that weighed green waters odorous and hot two yes you will find the silver tinselled night the mirror of the east that takes her hue but i the dusky toned the dry the brown but i the city crowned with that clear light which roofs the streets with crystal white and blue and cuts the cypress black above the town that clearest light which biting the straight stone the low-domed hills clipped sharp the cliffs of hell that pure and candid radiance bright to blind which brims the valley where a vision alone that fled like snow too infinite to tell or like the sibyls leaves before the wind three florence or nancy nancy doubly cold ah still in dreams i ride again as once the northern roads and late re-enter there below white august clouds with rounded bellies the great high thin ribbed gates of black and gold and stand in the wide eighteenth-century square beneath stone urns atop grey yellow fronts yes still i see down vistas of calot with yellow leaves along the linden alleys old houses in a sober brass-trimmed row leaf freshened courts clear windows long and low and the grey ancient gods that bear about their battered empty pods the eighteenth century on pose and face in fresh indelible grace end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a road runner by glenn ward dresbach for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by phil schempf o bird of lonely trails that end in haze you have been given speed and you are friend to riders down these opal tinted days less lonely for you but to what an end it leads all your swiftness with no place in mind a whimsy to be speeding just ahead of something else with nothing there to find may leave you poor as anything you led there is a madness in you that is known to dreamers on the lonely trails where thought speeds on from darkly moving shadow thrown upon the sands behind and so uncaught turns off at last into a quiet place long thrilled perhaps with nonsense of the race End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Optimist by Edward Sapir for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various, read for LibriVox.org by Matt Berard. Kicked in the belly by the gentleman of fate. Ah, yes, he says, I am a kettle drum. I mark the rhythm of the universal symphony end of poem this recording is in the public domain tragedy by paul s neckerson for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt perard the sunlight presses against the soji but only my old husband enters here. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Storm Ending by Jane Toomer for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various, read for LibriVox.org by Matt Perard. Thunder blossoms gorgeously above our heads great hollow bell-like flowers rumbling in the wind stretching clappers to strike our ears full-lipped flowers bitten by the sun bleeding rain 
dripping rain like golden honey and the sweet earth flying from the thunder end of poem this recording is in the public domain resurrection by paul eldridge for poetry of the double dealer nineteen twenty two by various read for librivox dot org by matt Berard. within the cavernous shadow-filled orbits of a saint's skull unearthed by the greedy snouts of hungry jackals two fireflies startled beating in terror their luminous wings End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cynic by H. Underwood Hoyt For Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Cynic he was so lonely that the lonely stars leaned down from their cold homes to pity him and yet he could not weep he was too frail to endure the blessed bitter balm of tears so he turned to laughter as they laugh who are too clever to be wise too small to hold the weight of sorrow and be kind he laughed so well he sang so cleverly no one could guess his heart's sure loneliness even the stars forgot him before long, for they grew drunk with laughing at his song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Voice of Death by Oscar Williams For Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various Read for LibriVox.org by nemo the voice of death the voice of death is wisdom through all things telling the granite where to wear and crumble the little sparrow how to preen its wings the lightning fangs to flash before the rumble and yet his wisdom is a secret grace to us who plough the hours for light and bread all beauty is the hiding of his face all living is the listening for his tread but when our eager listening grows numb and he has snapped our taut anxieties we do not even know that he has come but lean against the dust of centuries eager as ever in a world apart and listen for the beating of his heart end a poem this recording is in the public domain Storm Ending by Gene Toomer for Poetry of the Double Dealer, 1922, by Various. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. Thunder blossoms gorgeously above our heads, great hollow bell-like flowers rumbling in the wind, stretching clappers to strike our ears, full-lipped flowers bitten by the sun, bleeding rain, dripping rain like golden honey, and the sweet earth flying from the thunder in the poem this recording is in the public domain revisitants by margaret widdimer for poetry of the double dealer 1922 by various read for LibriVox.org by phil Schempf. we who went where dante went and persephone you can know us by the bent brow and shadowy by the eyes that still would dream through your loudest word of the kindness in some stream or some singing bird soft are words to all who live courteously we go there's so little to forgive knowing what we know yet have patience if we stare at your whimpering crowd where the nine great circles were no man cried aloud End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.